So we've all heard of box holes and shell scrapes, so I thought it was probably about time that I actually started building some for the tabletop. I haven't done much uh, bolt action or um, well, any other World War II games for a while, and I'm going to be getting back into it in the next couple of weeks. So I wanted to get some scenery ready on the table for it. So I jived straight in and made some foxholes, or shell scrapes, depending on how you want to call them. If you haven't already, guys, please do also like and subscribe uh, so you don't miss out in the future. So for this project, I started off using foam call and I drew out roughly uh, the length and depth of the pieces that I wanted using the miniatures themselves as the rough guide. Then I used my little blowtorch to actually melt the plastic. Make sure you do that outside because it does leave um, a terrible smell and probably you should wear a mask as well because uh, who knows what chemicals are in it. After that we use uh, the sort of the filler, poly filler, um, and I just built up the front more than anything and the space in between the two holes uh, just kind of as it would be when you throw your soil up when you're digging out the, the box hole itself and I just sort of took my time and built it up as much as I wanted to you could build them up even more so um, and really go to town on it but at the end of the day this isn't a diorama piece this is a scenery piece for a tabletop game. Um, if you want to make dioramas then you have to definitely spend a bit more time on it and really make them look perfect uh, but for me it's more about the actual game um, and being able to use it in a game. Functionality is I guess the word I'm looking for. So next up I base coated it with black and then used a dark brown spray as well and then I broke up a load of sticks uh, to use as part of the shell scrapes. Then using the hot glue, um, I just that's what I used to apply them, was the hot glue. I found that it works quite nicely on previous projects, that as long as you don't use too much, um, any of the glue which doesn't sort of get used uh, to bond the two pieces together, you can paint up and dry brush and it kind of looks like another trunk so it's quite useful in that sense but it's quite fun at this stage just trying to uh, lay the different pieces out into sort of realistic angles And then once that was finished, it was time to seal them. They are sticks at the end of the day, um, organic material. So what I did is I mixed up some brown paint, just craft paint, with um, wood glue, which I had, uh, Gorilla Glue. Um, mixed them together and then painted it over the whole lot. That way it can seal all of the, the bark onto the sticks, uh, bind the sticks to the base, uh, go over the hot glue, which sometimes is hard to paint over, so it was quite a good sort of, uh, almost like a primer, I guess. Maybe even it would have been better to have waited until um, gluing these down before spray painting and do the whole thing in a one -er. Yeah, probably in hindsight that would have been the better option, uh, but never mind. Live and learn. Plus this way it gave the wood a slightly different uh, base coat colour to the base of the, uh, like the floor base. But as you're going over them, as you can see there, uh, you find out whether the hot glue has uh, stuck the piece down properly or whether you're going to need to go back into it. There was one piece on one of these which needed a bit of extra work doing, so I went back over that after I'd finished painting and re-stuck that down.
So next up it was time to do the dry brushing and so for this stage I used Leather Brown from Game Color and just dry brushed it over. Um, I tried to concentrate most of the dry brushing from the top and the upper sides rather than the bottoms just where the sunlight is mainly going to catch. Um, so just take your time and go carefully with this. Once I'd applied the Leather Brown over all of the, uh, the logs, I then went back in with a mixture of khaki and leather brown to just make it even lighter and re went over the whole lot again being even more careful to just hit the tops of the logs on the second application. And now this is the stage which I really start to enjoy, which is when we start to put the uh, flocking and the basing materials onto the pieces. So again, I just use the same glue as I have all along, which is the Gorilla Glue wood glue. I believe that's what it's called anyway. And <clears throat> I do want my foxholes to kind of blend into most environments, so I go around the edges, especially on the front and sides, and then we'll be applying sort of a green flocking. That way if they're out in a field or wood block, there's a bit of greenery, uh, but not too much. And I'll also do the odd piece here and there on the back, kind of like when the clods of soil have been dug out and you try and put the grass back on the top just to uh, blend you in with the surrounding area. So I've done a few bits here and a few bits there just to try and make it all stand out the way it should do. And now if you guys have any other ideas on World War II specific projects that you would like me to have a go at, either 3D printing or scratch building, uh, I'm open to suggestions. I would like to try and make some of the uh, Czech hedgehogs. Uh, I'm not sure whether 3D printing or scratch building would be the best option on that, but let me know in the comments below. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely up for different things, some bunkers maybe. Uh, just yeah, let me know what you want to see and I will put some time into those videos. Also, just again, if you haven't already, do please like and subscribe. Then on the back here, I figured what I would do is there tends to be a specific way that people tend to move in and out of positions and so those areas are going to get the most uh, sort of foot traffic and become the most muddy and then the areas especially here where the logs and stuff come onto are going to have less uh, walking on so I've applied a bit of glue here to get some grass texture in there also um, I just feel that's kind of the way humans are we tend to be a lazy at heart and be uh, creatures of routine and habit, usually to our detriment, especially in a military situation. Um, but yeah, I think it's quite uh, accurate to just have a little break in between each of the, the holes themselves.
And then next up it's time to actually start applying a few more interesting pieces. Here's where I realised I was out of super glue, so it was all going to have to be done with the wood glue. And so I'm using a matchstick here just to apply uh, some blobs down. So I've got a few tufts of static grass, uh, which I've got pre-made to stick in. I've also found quite a cool technique using uh, some, uh, what do you call it, uh, basically string, garden string, uh, the brown sort of string that you see in most hardware stores, and just chop that down to whatever length you want, break it up in your fingers till it's quite sort of fibrous, and then you can stick that in and it kind of works like quite tall, uh, dead grass. I've also got the clump foliage, which I'm putting small amounts onto the different uh, tree trunks and branches just like they've been hacked down and there's still a bit of foliage still left on them. And you've always got the option you could always chuck more grass, uh, sorry, more f uh, foliage on or less foliage and if you were doing a winter diorama, which I would quite like to do at some point, um, you would just be able to put snow over the top of them instead of greenery. Uh, there's a lot of different options for you depending on theatre of war, time of year and your own personal interest level of what you want to see on the tabletop. Once again guys, if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. But there we have them, uh, finished on the painting table. And to be honest with you, I am pretty happy with the way they've come out. Um, I think they really do the job nicely. Yeah, from the front, yep, the box holes are concealed. Uh, a nice bit of foliage, a few logs around, just exactly what you want. And from behind, you can see straight into the actual scrapes themselves. So I'm happy with the outcome, I hope you are too, uh, please leave some comments down below of what you want to see next, and take care, see you next time.